brothers and sisters, before we get into today's episode, let me briefly summarize what we've talked about so far. God listened to the cries of Israel enslaved in Egypt and set up Moses as their leader to deliver them out of Egypt. Moses delivered God's will to King Pharaoh, but the king refused to let him go because it went against his benefits. As a result, Egypt was stricken by the ten plagues. Only then did he release them. By God's power, Israel escaped from Egypt safe and sound. The first generation set out for the promised land, but despite watching God's numerous works, they hardened their hearts to the end, failing to have faith. They wandered in the wilderness and faced death. Yet, this doesn't mean God's covenant with Israel was gone. Their offspring, the second generation, marched towards Canaan with Joshua being their head. Unlike their parents, the second generation possessed spiritual faith strong enough to take Canaan, having gone through trials in the wilderness. Joshua and the Israelites boldly marched in faith, crossed the Jordan, and finally switched Canaan. And, solely by God's power, they gradually expanded their territory. First, at the center of Canaan, they destroyed Jericho, which was like a gateway to Canaan, and subsequently, they conquered the city of Ai. They defeated the united forces of the southern region gathered in Gibeon to fight against Israel, and then quickly took over its major cities. Moment by moment, the Almighty God was He was with the Israelites He even kindly instructed them on how to fight, manifesting marvelous works for them. God stopped the flow of the overflowing Jordan River and made the thick wall of Jericho crumble down instantly. He sent down stones to destroy Israel's enemies and even made the sun and the moon stop. Of course, it's not that everything always went smoothly and favorably. When God was, when God was with them, Israel easily won victories, empowered by His wisdom and His amazing power. But when He wasn't, they went through various problems. While God turned. While God turned away from Israel on account of Achan's sin, Israel suffered a painful defeat even in a small city. Also, when they hastily made a decision based on man's thoughts without asking God, they were deceived by the Gibeonites, which disabled them from taking the land they were supposed to take. Yet, going through all this, Joshua and the people made their faith and obedience all the firmer. and continued to take more of the land. Following their battles in the central region to take over Jericho and Ai, they defeated the united forces of the southern region, and without taking a break, they had to prepare for the next battle. We stop at this scene in the last session. The history of Israel is not just about the events which took place thousands of years back, but it closely relates to our lives today. Whether in doing secular business or accomplishing God's work, we are not to forget that we are always in a spiritual battle. Only when, we, only when we win a spiritual battle against the animal devil and evil spirits, we are blessed and healed and have our problems resolved. Israel won victories through God's presence. Likewise, if God is with us, we will be prosperous in all affairs and victories. The secrets to our victories, the secrets to our victories and resolution of our problems are found in the Bible. Reading the Bible, we shouldn't think they are merely events which took place thousands of years back, but consider them the same kind of spiritual battles we face right now. When Israel kept the word of God, they experienced God's work, enjoying victory all the time. 
But as they committed sins or failed to discern God's will, God turned away from them. So they suffered a bitter defeat. Looking at such scenes, we can learn how we can experience God's work and lead a prosperous life and how we can have our heart's wishes and how we can have our wishes answered and take heaven, which is the Lord's promise, by force. God is alive, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He blesses and answers those who keep His commandments and seek Him wholeheartedly. Thus, whoever longs for the land flowing with milk and honey will be greatly inspired and empowered by the messages on the conquest of Canaan. I pray in our Lord's name that all of you will make these messages yours. Come forth as warriors of faith like Joshua and thereby take God's promises. Relying on the power of the Almighty God, Israel had conquered cities in the central region, including Jericho, and then the southern region. The news quickly spread to the tribes in the northern region. Having been vigilant and watchful against Israel, the tribes must have been shocked. They desperately felt the need to unite as one and fight against Israel with all their might. And particularly, Jabin, the king of one of the powerful cities, urgently contacted the other cities nearby. The Bible says, He sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Simon, and to the king of es s h a b a t h and to the kings who were of the northern in the hill country, and in the Arabah, south of Chernoth, and in the lowland, and on the heights of Dor, on the west, to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and on the Amorite and the Hittites and the Perizzite and the Jebusite in the hill country, and the Hivite at the food of Hermon in the land of m e z o p h Before long, each tribe came with their army. The Canaanite tribes united and formed the United Forces for a battle against Israel. Who? Do you think won the battle? The strong armies of many tribes versus a single nation of Israel. What was the outcome? No matter how strongly united they were, Israel defeated them in an instant. They won victory after victory. How did this happen? Our God was with them. No matter how strongly united the Canaanites were for the battle, the victory went to where God was. They, the same goes for us. It's the same in your life. In, while live, we live in this world, we are having a spiritual battle. The only thing we need is God's presence, but we have to make Him being with us. But without Making God being with us, we just look at the reality and confess. We lack knowledge. I lack skills. I am poor. But that person is knowledgeable. He's rich and skilled. They only look at the reality and make confessions that are without faith. We have to change our confessions into those with faith. Because God is with me, all is prosperous, and I will be blessed. Because God is with me, everything can go well, and it will. If you confess in faith, living in His Word, nothing is impossible. We, we shouldn't just say those with words. We shouldn't, once we say those words, we have to find a way to make God. We have to find a way. We know the way exactly. We shouldn't just say, God is with me. No matter how many times we say this, God is not with us. The way to let Him be with us, the way to let Him protect us, we have learned the ways through the words. So, along with the confession of faith, we have to let God be with us, let God fight for us. 
They were numerous. The Canaanites came out with all their armies. They were numerous as the sand on the seashore, with very many horses and chariots. On the contrary, going through many battles, Israel hadn't, res- Israel hadn't rested properly and they had to deal with all these armies. Without help, they were in a battle. They also had to make use of the geographical traits. But Israel, they were fighting with the Canaanites. They were not fighting in, in their own land. So there were many disadvantages. That's why if they had relied only on their strength, they could have been frightened and discouraged. But again, God encouraged Joshua, promising him victory. God said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow at this time I will deliver all of them slain before no matter how many horses and chariots they had. Those things didn't ensure their victory. God told them not to be afraid, even though they were numerous. And He said, No matter, you shall shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. No matter how many horses and chariots they had, those things didn't ensure their victory in the battle. In the countries where God was not with, even though they had more advantages, I mean, because, but the side where God was, the victory didn't depend on the physical traits. Just as David confessed, all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. The outcome of a battle is up to the Lord alone. Joshua and his army again got up the courage only by faith and attacked against the numerous enemy. Numerous enemy troops camped at the waters. God entirely delivered them into the hand of Israel. Israel defeated the united forces of of the Canaanites at once, not leaving a single person alive. As God commanded, they hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. They also burned Hazar, a powerful city which served as the leader of the united forces, thereby letting people know about God's judgment. Joshua and Israel finished another major battle, conquering the northern region of Canaan as well. As you look at the screen, they were located in Gilgar. As you please, can you go back? They crossed the Jordan, reached at Jericho, and they attacked Ai, and they, and then, and then. They were between the Gerizim and Ebal, and together they proclaimed the word of God, the word of curse, and the word of blessing, and they engraved the word of God on their mind. That's where they did so. And they, and after they proclaimed the word of God, and then they again had the battles in Gibeon, And they had battles with the southern kings. And Bethron, God sent down heavy stones from heaven. So the enemy troops who were killed by sword, the number of the more soldiers were killed by the heavy stones than by the sword. And they went down to the southern region, conquering its cities. And then they went to and they went straight up to the northern region and then they faced the united forces and had battles with them and they won victory and they burned the city named Hazor so they conquered most of the cities in Canaan 
That's what we've uh, looked at so far. With their victory in the battle against the kings of the northern region, Israel's conquest battles ended in general. The Bible says, So Joshua took the whole land according to all what the Lord had spoken to Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance to Israel according to their visions, the visions by their tribes. Thus the land had rest from war. This was the moment Israel finally took possession of Canaan, which the Almighty Lord God promised them. They, the battles, major battles were over, and most of the land were conquered. This must have taken quite a long time. We've gone over this for a few weeks. We are talking about many battles, but you may, th- you may think they had battles for a few weeks or for a few days. But s- actually, after Moses died, since Joshua received the baton, it had taken. S- It had seven years had already passed, so we uh, went over the battles in a short period of time, and they and they quickly finished the battles, and also in the northern region they quickly finished the battles. But but that doesn't mean they finished the battles in a few days. Also, they were times they prepare for the next battle. They were. times in between the battles. Actually, after they crossed the Jordan, they also circumcised themselves. So all these processes took seven years. God promised Canaan to Abraham, the father of faith, and only after hundreds of years, in Moses' time, that promise was fulfilled in a visible way. Even after Israel escaped Egypt with Moses, they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness and then seven years on the conquest battles. After their 40 years in the wilderness, they had spent seven years on the conquest battles. If the first generation had demonstrated faith, they themselves would have received the blessing of Canaan. But since they failed to have faith, the blessing was delayed. God's promise is always accompanied with conditions. Through this instance, we have to know that His promise is always accompanied. Only those who truly trust and obey Him can see His work. only then can they satisfy the conditions. God doesn't just bless people unconditionally, but they give conditions like you have to do this and that, you have to live so. He clearly does. Also when to the Israelites, He gave them covenants and sometimes He gave them trials. Only after they passed the trials did they receive answers, blessings. But if you fail to do so, they couldn't make God's covenant their own. History testifies to this. It's the same for us. For example, the Bible says God God is the healer. But there are people who are blessed according to the word, but, but others fail to receive healing. And they say, I learned that God is, God is called God the healer, but how come He doesn't heal me? They misconceive that they pray with faith, but God doesn't answer. But about healing as well, God clearly presented conditions. I think you are familiar with this verse. If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight and give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you on your, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. You are very familiar with this verse. God clearly tells us that He would heal us. He will protect us from being stricken by any diseases. If only we live, do what is right in His sight. But while people do what is right 
in people's sight, they make such claims. We have to do what is right in His sight, not in people's sight. Then, no disease would infiltrate us. And God surely protects us. But some believers don't reflect on themselves with the word, but they compare themselves to other people. And they think they're doing well. They think, as a church worker, he used to have greater faith than me, but now I am better. They make such confessions and they think so. Even as they judge and condemn others with arrogance, they don't realize about themselves. They don't realize they're evil. And they say, how come I don't have God's answer? And they think they're doing well spiritually. They should never think so because they just do what is right in their their sight, not in God's sight. You know, We have to achieve purity and sanctification that Father God wants. But if we don't do so, we, based on God's word, we have to look at ourselves. And then we can realize what Father God wants from us. If we don't do so, if we just alter, if we change the words of truth and apply it in a wrong way, and if we misunderstand that, we are doing better than others. We are just doing what is right in our sight, not in God's sight. That's why we cannot receive answers and blessings. Among His commandments and statutes, God didn't tell us to keep only easy ones, but all of them. But people, we have to achieve spiritual love, loving even our enemies, turning our turning our left cheek to a person who snaps on the right cheek, giving our coat to a person who wants to take our shirt, and offering to walk two miles when a person whom we hate suggests walking with him one mile, but we want to do so, so we want to take a break. This is not, Father, this is not, this is not the truth that Father God wants. What Father God wants from us is to love even our enemies, to sacrifice ourselves, and give up what we have. And we... Even towards a person who do evil against us, we have compassion on them and extend our goodness to them. This is God's goodness. This is God's righteousness. But if you think, because, just because I don't fight with them, you shouldn't think you're doing well, but still you have ill feelings. You still have hatred, but you think you're doing well. So where is your standard? You are not based on the Word of God. You just think you are... You just consider yourself right. Father God, Father God never consider, considers that truth and Father God never compliments you. If you... If only you see a person's little fault, you are quick to gossip about him. Yet, you don't think you will hate. But God does not help but say, you didn't keep His commandment. because you are not practicing the Word of God. But if you keep all God's commands and the words of truth, God will protect you and have none of the diseases come upon you. Here, diseases refer to all diseases existing in the world. Namely, if we live by God's will, not only will He heal us, but keep any diseases from striking us. He is our Father God. But if we neither do what is right in His sight nor keep His commandments, we have nothing to do with God's promise of protecting us from diseases and healing us. As we hear such uh, stories, I'm so heartbroken. They say, because the pastor is not here, they want to, they seek, they change the truth in a comfortable way. Father God clearly tells us, us not to do this and that. Uh, they say we, sh- we should let people loose. You, you should lead a more comfortable Christian life. Who taught you that way? Did Father God told you so? Never, never does He tell you so. But teachings of the senior pastor is not His will, but it is the will of God, the will that pleases Him. So it's important for us to keep them. But But people say, we had to do so when the senior pastor was 
around us, but while senior pastor is not with us, we cannot live so. But is it okay for us just to receive salvation and not to enter New Jerusalem? They want to live so. Do you, senior pastor is not around us. You still have a goal of New Jerusalem? Father God's will, even though Father God's will is difficult, you want to still you want to keep them? Amen. Then, Father God will help us, will protect us in this harsh and difficult world, and He will answer and bless us. This is the right Christian life. We didn't lead a Christian life because of our senior pastor. Senior pastor showed God's power and taught us according to God's will. That's why we call call them our shepherd and serve them with gratitude. And still, God wants us to live so. That's why we have to... So, what we've learned and what we've been taught is still recorded in the Bible. The, The Word of God never changes and it still exists as it is. Then, Father God's promises are still effective to us But some people, if you say like those difficult, those narrow paths, please don't impose those narrow paths on me. It's like saying, it's okay, we don't receive blessings. You should never confess so. According to what we've taught, according to what we've learned, we have to keep them. Then all those promises are still effective to us. diseases come by sins and evil but of course among people with diseases are those who suffer under God's permission so that they can discover themselves like Job and become more perfect thus we shouldn't judge anyone but mostly people are stricken by diseases just because they live in a wrong way just because they deviate from the word So my members shouldn't live so. We have to follow the absolute word of God. The absolute word of God, you have to make a standard out of God's word. And then Father God's answers and blessings are still effective to us. Thus, for God's promise to be fulfilled, people who receive the promise should also satisfy the conditions according to their measure of faith. As God promised the first generation, I mean, as God promised the first generation the entry into Canaan, He presented conditions that they needed to have faith. And through Moses, God manifested great miracles and signs numerous times so that Israel could meet His conditions. He didn't just say, believe me, but He told them to believe, showing them convincing evidences. Nevertheless, the first generation who failed to have faith died in the wilderness. As a result, God's promise was delayed. Eventually, in the following generation, the promise was fulfilled. Unlike their parents, the second generation followed Joshua's guidance in firm faith, ultimately taking the land flowing with milk and honey. The Bible says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua, and so Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Namely, they obey as God commanded, as Moses commanded. As Joshua himself showed faith and complete obedience, and the Israelites followed him well, God's promise was fulfilled through them. We have to engrave this in our heart. When God gave us visions for the world evangelization and the grand sanctuary, He didn't just say, believe. While He gave us such great visions, He didn't say, because I gave you such visions and dreams, you just have to believe. But with great and amazing power to guarantee the shepherd, He's always manifested numerous evidences of His presence. 
He conf- through power manifested by the shepherd, God confirmed that that's why we have been able to believe and follow the, the sh- His word. While He showed numerous works, He proclaimed that He would fulfill the promises and covenant through us. But also, He presented conditions. He said that we have to achieve a pure and holy heart and that many of us have to reach the levels of spirit and whole spirit. The grand sanctuary is what Father God really wants to achieve because that serves as the uh, symbol of the victory of the human cultivation. But it couldn't just be achieved by anyone. That's why He gave us conditions. Of course, the construction of the grand sanctuary is achieved by Father God. It's not But Father God wants from us. He wants us to achieve a holy and clean heart. Namely, many of us have to reach the levels of spirit and whole spirit. If so, He promised that He Himself would get things fulfilled because the gold and the silver are His. God also demonstrated His greatness through the shepherd's power. Watching it, we would rejoice and confess our faith in His promises. We believed in such extraordinary works. No one said, how could the Grand Sanctuary be accomplished? But but the condition, but how many of the conditions have you satisfied to fulfill the promises? How many of the conditions? Didn't God do what He said despite your perfect obedience? No way. We've seen and experienced the great and amazing evidences of the living God and His love, which we cannot see or experience elsewhere. Yet, we've fallen short of sanctification and spiritual faith required of us. But even now, it's not too late to achieve them. Then, He promised His promise will be fulfilled wonderfully and mightily through us. We have to, we can find the reason why it has been fulfilled. So, we have to fulfill what Father God wants from us. And you shouldn't, and you shouldn't say this just because the pastor is not with us. But we have to do according to what we've been taught by the shepherd. Only then will he fulfill what he has promised. You may say, we've prayed, but why didn't his answer come? Just because time passes, just because the Israelites spent time in the wilderness, God's answer didn't come. If we prepare our vessel, Father God will answer us immediately. That's why we have to prepare the vessel. Israel did not, Israel conquered the God-promised Canaan. Through battles, they conquered the southern and northern regions, but that doesn't mean all of their tasks were finished. It is true that The land of Canaan was in general under God's governance, but still, there were tribes that hadn't been destroyed. From then on, Israel had to drive out the remaining Canaanites and settle down, thereby fully taking possession of the land. Joshua, who'd engaged in a long, Joshua, who'd engaged in long battles, became an old man. But there were remaining areas to conquer, so God completely changed the course of the battle. God commanded that the areas of the land which had been and would be conquered be allotted to each tribe in advance. Up until that point. All the trials of Israel had together conquered the Gentiles, but then God commanded each tribe to take their own share by faith. 
Under Joshua's guidance, the entire Israel had won battles. But from then on, the victory for each tribe was up to their deeds of faith. As they each took their land, depending on how they displayed spiritual faith, how they obeyed according to God's will, the outcome of God's promise would differ. Joshua, now Joshua was about to distri- distribute the land among the Israelites. By the time Joshua proceeded with this, there was a person who claimed his right. He claimed that more than 40 years back, God had already pr- promised him land, so he requested that the land be allotted to him first. He was Caleb, the son of j a b o n a h You probably remember that only two of the twelve spies selected among the first generation to spy out the Canaan land made confessions of faith. Being instigated by the other ten spies who spoke out of their fleshly thoughts, hostile to God, the congregation cried, complaining against God and Moses. But the two spies who confessed in faith tore their clothes in Lamentation. Although the entire first generation faced death in the wilderness for their disobedience, these two spies were promised that they would survive to enter Canaan. One of the two was Joshua, the leader of the second generation, and the other was Caleb, whom I'm talking about. God said, But my servant Caleb, because this was spoken when The spies spy out the land. Let's go back to the scene when they spy out the land. The Bible says, But my servant Caleb, because he has had a different spirit, which means while all the congregation complained, while other spies confessed out of their fleshly thoughts, God said, Because he had had a different spirit and had followed me fully, I will bring him into the land which he entered, and his descendants shall take possession of it. Caleb had been promised so 40 years back. During the 40-year trial in the wilderness and the seven-year conquest battle, Caleb never forgot this promise. Usually, people forget God's promise. with passing of time. After they pray for a few months, uh, for a year or a few years, they get tired of waiting and forget about them. Even after some people pray for a specific subject for a few years, they get tired of waiting and forget about the promise. Yet Caleb didn't forget the promise for over 40 years. He waited steadfastly praying. Finally, when the time arrived for the distribution of the land, he quoted God's promise, requesting that the land be given to him. You should have misunderstood Caleb. At this point, Caleb was not boasting of what he did in the past, and he was, you should have misunderstood him this way. Uh, neither was Caleb insisting on getting treatment as an elderly who'd long been Joshua's side. No, there, let there be no misunderstanding. Rather, what Caleb said was an expression of his faith, which had become even firmer amidst the trials that had lasted over 40 years. He was also expressing his resolve to take the lead in making dedication for the fulfillment of God's will. Moreover, the land he requested was Hebron, which had been conquered. Uh, which Hebron hadn't been conquered. Hebron required him to have more battles from then on. The Gentiles who live, residing in Hebron were Anakites. They were the robust people that once scared the ten spies and caused them to say, "We saw Nephilim there." We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. There were such robust people living in that region which Caleb requested. Caleb didn't ask for an area already conquered, 
but relying on God's promise, he requested Hebron, which had been inhabited by the robust people and required difficult battles. A confession from his The confession from this old warrior who had gone through a lot for many years is so inspiring. He said, Caleb said, Now behold, the Lord has let me live just as He spoke these 45 years. From the time that the Lord spoke still from the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses when Israel walked in the wilderness and now behold I am 85 years old today I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me as my strong as my strength was then so my strength is now for war and for going out and coming in Ordinary people would say, now that, I'm, now that I am 85 years of age, but ordinary people would say, now that I am 85 years of age, I am not the same person I was 40 years, 45 years ago. No wonder I am not as strong. I am well advanced in years. So there's nothing I can do. That's what ordinary people would say. Even though they would say something, they would say things like, I'm not as strong as I was 45 years back. But we find Caleb's faith even greater than it was 45 years back. That's why he said like, I am just as vigorous as I was 45 years ago. I am still as strong. Caleb went on to say, Now then give this hill country about which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day that Anakim were there with great fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. Actually, his confession could have been better. He said, Perhaps the Lord will be with me. But, s e n i o Pastor said that uh, it, it could have been more perfect without the word perhaps. Why? God never breaks His promise even with the passing of time. If only we keep His word, God makes sure to be with us. He does things ahead of us. He accomplishes things and resolves all our issues. Thus, we, my men, should confess like, even though the cities are great and fortified, because the Lord is with me, I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. How do, you think Caleb, how do you think Joshua felt as he heard Caleb's confession? To Joshua, Caleb was a companion who had been long with him through trials since the Exodus, and he was also a friend of faith who had shared joy and sorrow with him. And this Caleb ensured the word of God and volunteered to take, the, take his inheritance first. How moved Joshua must have felt. Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron as promised by God. By faith, Caleb did. By faith, Caleb drive away the robust Anakites and took their fertile land as an inheritance, thereby setting an example of faith before the Israelites. Starting with Caleb, the distribution of the land began in earnest. In the next session, we will explore how the land was distributed among the Israelites and how each tribe took the land. We just, we just heard the wonderful deeds of faith and wonder, His wonderful confession. But in the next session, you will hear confessions contrary to this Confessions of complaint, complaints, 
you will hear about it in the next session. The confessions you will hear in the next session will be contrary to Caleb's confession. How wonderful his confessions were. We should also make such confessions. We have to check ourselves as to whether we can make such confessions. You may say, I can do so as well. You have to really look at your life. Look at your life of faith and apply it in your life of faith and repent. If any of you still think, because senior pastor is not with us, we can just lead a comfortable Christian life. If you change the word of God like this in a way that you like, in a way, and if you teach people so, you have to thoroughly repent of it. If you make such confessions, if you have such conversations, do you still seek God's blessing? Do you still seek God's answer? Why? You have to find out the reason why you haven't received His answer yet. Those people who were with Joshua, they won victory after victory. And because most of the land had been conquered, they didn't have to have uh, the lands that had been conquered. Uh, Each tribe had to have a battle and Father God commanded the land to be distributed that way. And there were still people who complained and confessed like, that land is too difficult to conquer. We want an easier one. We want a better land. There were people who complained like that. But Caleb was different. He asked for a land that was difficult to conquer. Also, he was qualified to make that demand. And he was strong enough His faith was strong enough to conquer that land. All of us should become such warriors of faith. But that doesn't happen automatically. We have to diligently circumcise our heart. And even though the Word of God seems unbeneficial to us, um, it seems unbeneficial because we have to hate, we have to like a person whom we hate. It feels like we have to sacrifice ourselves. That's why it seems unbeneficial. Still, if we give up ourselves and sacrifice ourselves, that strengthens our faith. But you refuse to sacrifice yourself. You refuse to yield to others. Still, you ask for greater faith. But faith doesn't come to you automatically. We have to, we just, we figured out how we can, so we have to keep them and then Father God's covenants will not be gone and we will be... Let me conclude the message. The Bible says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter of which I sent it. As snowflakes or raindrops disappear into the ground, they become invisible, but absorbed in the soil, they make seeds sprout when the time comes. What our faithful God has promised is surely fulfilled. Although its fulfillment may take some time and is invisible right now. Therefore, Rather than complaining about the lack of His answer, we can just accept His word with faith, engrave it on our heart, and obey it accordingly. Then, all of the covenants in His word will become ours, and His word will be fulfilled without going back. Rain and snow come down from heaven, but don't go back up to the sky. They water the soil and give life, don't they? It's the same. The Word of God doesn't go back up, but finally comes as answers and blessings and brings forth, brings forth life. Thus, we should make sure to accept the Word of God as ours and fulfill and accomplish it. Brothers and sisters, our life on this earth is like a pilgrimage. 
until we reach heaven. We continually fight against the rulers, the powers, the world forces of this darkness, and the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. It's like Joshua and Israel engaged in long battles for the conquest of Canaan even after they crossed the Jordan and destroyed Jericho. For this reason, even after we obtain a blessing, we should solidify it. Even after we achieve something, we shouldn't stop there but press on for our next goal. We still hear of people receiving answers and blessings. Whenever we hear of them, we rejoice. And those people who receive blessings and answers, and they confess that they are overflowing with joy, and they say, they confess that it feels like their faith has grown a lot. And it it feels like they can overcome trials. But some people, you know, they overflow with joy. But as time passes, as they face trials, they again have to demonstrate faith. But human beings fail to do so. With testimonies, With God's answers and blessings, we rejoice. But with passing of time, they begin to take a break from praying and they give up in the face of trials. The human cultivation, you know, just because you received His answer once, still after that, you have to look back on yourself and you shouldn't take a break. You shouldn't think it's over. Still, you have to be ready to face the trials coming up. How do you make yourself prepared? It's not to say you have to be worried and concerned, but you have to sanctify yourself and you shouldn't arrogant. But if you think you've achieved something, you may fall down in the upcoming trial. You have to make yourself more until Father God calls us to heaven, until we achieve our final goal, we have to keep going. We have to discipline ourselves. We will face battles, spiritual battles continually. This is what our spiritual faith, spiritual life is like. That way we can grow our faith. This is our march of faith. Our march of faith goes on until we have eternal rest in heaven. Also, as we march on, our faith grows day after day. This is the providence of human cultivation. We have to figure this out. You know, when senior pastor was with us, it felt like we had no trial. We led such a comfortable Christian life. We greatly benefited from that. But right now, we are in a trial. Even though you find yourself having fallen down through the trial, you shouldn't be dismayed. This is what the human cultivation is like. We have to think how comfortable we were back when Sina Pastor was with us. And we have to remember what we've been taught and obey accordingly. Then, even in the face of trial and difficulties, we can overcome them. We can overcome them with ease. As we do so, we can also lead others with weaker faith. To this day, God has given us many promises of blessing. Our Lord also promised that He would prepare a place for us and come again to take us. This promise is soon to be fulfilled as well. I hope that you will keep unchanging faith in all God's promises just as Caleb, the warrior of faith, did and obtained fruit by demonstrating both deeds of faith. 
You shouldn't think it's gone. It's not something we have to achieve. You shouldn't lose your faith like that. You know, remember Caleb's confession. He remembered what God promised 40 years back, and he asked for it. He boldly demanded it. You have to make such demands the way he did. Even after 40 years, you may think uh, 40 years, they went through the wilderness and they spent seven years in the battles you may calculate the years and there may be some you may think there may be some errors but actually after they left Egypt so So, and they spent seven years in the conquest battles. They, he still remembered what was promised, and he made a promise fulfilled. When did you receive God's promise? Five years ago? Ten years ago? Or twenty years ago? But, but you think. they were not fulfilled? Even even though you've prayed hard, you have to remember His promises are still effective, but depending on how you hold on to it, you can, you have to make them fulfilled. Also, after you get something achieved, you shouldn't be satisfied and become sluggish. But, No matter what kind of situation you face, you shouldn't be discouraged, but take heaven by force and press on. By doing so, I pray in our Lord's name that all of you will partake in the glory of the holy city of New Jerusalem. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells, and bring the dead back to life. 
Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.